I'd like to introduce John Pagan. John is chair of the Fire Engineering Group within the Fire Industry Association. John, my first question to you is, um, why did you send me the other week up to London to sign a memorandum of understanding between the FIA and the IFE? The, the reason was really just that to um, really emphasise that link with the IFE, that the IFE has been doing some wonderful work over previous years and, de and decades, but uh, they represent individuals in the fire engineering industry and so there are, uh, was no real industry body that was able to represent um, fire engineering companies. So that's really where the, uh, the Fire Engineering Council of the FIA fits in, that we fill that gap and that we're not in no way competing with them, we're coordinating with them significantly in a number of different areas in order to try and push the fire engineering profession forward. So it's quite a, while it is a, simply a document, it really reflects that the wider issues that are going on behind there and the support, the, the mutual support that the two organisations are providing for each other. Obviously close links between now the IFE and the FIA, clearly on the professionalism of the staff being employed. Uh, I guess it's very similar to what our fire detection alarm people see with their SP203 and BAFE, whereby we're looking at qualifications and competency. Yes, uh, absolutely. And really from a client's point of view, it's very important that we provide things that we can that can help them empl employ or make sure that the, the engineers that they employ are competent. Uh, the IFE has been running chartered engineer status for fire engineers for quite a few years, but hasn't necessarily taken well, the industry by storm. There's large, quite a small proportion of the uh, fire engineers that are operating within the industry or selling themselves as fire engineers are actually chartered with the IFE or, or other organisations. So. It does mean that clients don't necessarily have the confidence that they're employing uh, competent fire engineers. The FIA is working with um, the IFE in order to try and push that forward and make sure that company or fire engineering companies are focusing on employing chartered fire engineers. And really that can only be good for the industry and for, for the IFE as well as the FIA. So John, following on from the competency, I know your council has also been looking this year at um, producing a procurement guide for fire engineering services. I'm assuming this is to try and help somebody who wants to procure some fire engineering, a bit of guide, guide, advice and guidance there. Get the teeth in the right place, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's following on from really the similar things that the Fire Risk Assessment Council are doing. Um, basically, if you're a, a client, clients don't necessarily know uh, exactly how to uh, employ competent fire engineers and what scope of works for what should be used. We often get either asked to write our own scopes of work, which in a competitive situation isn't great, or clients trying to put together some um, version themselves and they, as non-specialists then they don't necessarily always do the, the best job. There was a lot of feedback from them. They'd appreciate a centrally produced standard scope of services that they could use to appoint fire engineers, but then also a guidance and note on exactly what processes should they go through to try and employ uh, competent fire engineers. So hopefully those two documents together will help people employ competent fire engineers in the future. And um, you're looking at the FIA obviously to promulgate that information out to the wider world so people can obviously see that going forwards? Absolutely. I mean the FIA has got some some wonderful experience and expertise within uh, marketing of these these areas so it's not the kind of thing that fire engineering companies ourselves could do so having that the resources there within the FIA is, uh, is, is, is amazing really. And talking about using our resources I know probably one of the number one issue for for your team at this moment in time is the issue that we're having with inspecting officers could you explain to everybody what the actual issue is and how the FIA is helping you to resolve this. Absolutely, yes, it's large amounts of work going into this right now. Uh, when organisations are trying to um, get their, the building designs approved under building regulations, they can either go to a local authority builder control or they can go to an approved inspecting an approved inspector company, which is a company that's authorised by the uh, SIC Air, the Construction Industry Council approved inst inspectors register to, uh, to provide those building control services. The, uh, in, in the regulations guiding approved inspectors, there is a regulation called Regulation 9, which uh, guides how they should be separating themselves from the design services. So they shouldn't be involved in approving a design which they, they or their organisation was involved in designing. But as the industry has developed, there are some companies that have set up a sister company, a group company arrangement, so there'll be one 
uh, uh, staff within one company that is doing the approved inspecting company, and there are staff um, approving designs that are produced by uh, the sister companies within the same group structure. So, so we're looking almost at poacher and game people with a with a paper Chinese wall between them, is it? There is, and there's just simply no guidance in the first place. Is how would they separate those two functions? So for one thing, is it acceptable to do that? The second thing, if they if it is acceptable, how do they separate those two functions? And so, because there's no central guidance on that, all the different companies that are doing it are doing it to their own different standards, and it's not a level playing field, and varying standards throughout the industry. It's really not a great position. It's also by going down that line too far, it does start breaching the, the concept of independent third-party reviews, which is a, quite a dangerous way to, 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 to go down if we go down that to, to, the, to the full extent. So it's a good time to work with the industry to highlight the, highlight the issue. And currently we're now on a, um, in a working group with various other industry bodies trying to put together some guidance for SICA, the Approved Inspector Register Organisation, to use when they are reviewing approved inspector organisation to say, if you are part of this sister company, group company arrangements, do you have these appropriate controls in place and prove it to me so that I, when we're checking the old competence for doing, you know, for doing approved inspector role, you can... Uh, and I assume we've got some supporters on this, supporting the actions we're taking and others that are obviously uh, running those practices who are not too keen on us uh, opening Pandora's box on this one. I think... There's overall enthusiasm to try and um, look at this issue and develop it. There are differing views as to how far um, you should go down the line of separating the roles. Is it, uh, is it acceptable, for example, to have the approvers and uh, reviewers on opposite sides of the same desk working from, with each other? Um, some, personally, I believe that you can't necessarily review a design independently from someone that you're sitting opposite every day. Others believe you can. Uh, these are the discussions that we're having, and we're in, the, in that process right now. Well, John, I can say from the FIA's point of view, we've certainly uh, ruffled feathers with government before. Uh, we've still got some feathers that are being ruffled. Uh, you've certainly got our full support for you and your team in the, uh, the fire engineering side. And I think that brings the interview to a close. So thank you very much, John. Thank you.